This is uh, Van Bradeen here up in Spokane, Washington. Um, this is going to be my first introduction video for um, for YouTube. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a few years, and this is the first time I'm actually going to do it. So here goes. This is my introduction. Um, my name on here is going to be Mountain Preacher, but I want to start out and just share my passion for doing this. Um, it's not because I'm excited about doing YouTube, it's because I'm excited about helping people uh, find freedom in Christ. And I'm going to read some notes a little bit here and there, so I'll be looking down sometimes. But here's my goal, here's my passion for this um, YouTube uh, posting I'm going to be doing. Helping people find freedom from their past so they can live like Jesus. Now, what does that mean? Um, I've been pastoring for a long time, and I'll, I'll get to some... Uh, stuff as I go in, in the sense of some details here in, in different videos and even in this video but um, I, it's my passion now it hasn't been for my whole Christian life or my whole pastorate life because I'm just learning a lot more in the sense I'm, I'm old now I'm 56 been pastoring for a long time but I'm learning a lot more uh, just the heart of Jesus and, and the passion and the compassion to help people so what does that mean it means to help people find a real relationship with Jesus instead of just uh, being religious or living in this Christian world or living in a Christian church or whatever, but to really uh, see people impacted by a true relationship with God. Uh, peace, joy, and rest. Those are the kingdom of God right there. Uh, Jesus or uh, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 14 really gives us the only definition of what the kingdom of God is. And it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That means a relationship. That means the Holy Spirit, God himself living in us. Um, and it's my passion to help people find that joy and that peace and rest in life. Now, <clears throat> I'm speaking from experience personally, and I'm speaking from experience helping people. Um, our world is screwed up. Uh, and I'm even going to say this. Um, I'm not very Christianese anymore. I used to be very Christianese, but... Um, our Christian world, our Christian American church is uh, messed up in a lot of ways. And uh, I don't want to be critical of it in a sense, <clears throat> but I want to be real that a lot of uh, teaching out there doesn't teach what Jesus taught. And it's my passion to take somebody, even a, a Christian or even a non-Christian and help them find out who Jesus is. and. Uh, but really my ultimate passion is to take somebody who is broken, who is beat up, who um, has a past that is brutal, whether it's abuse, whether it's been um, trauma, whatever it's been, and not just say, oh, you're a follower of Jesus, just you know, go and, and live in peace, but actually to help that person come to a point in their life where they could forgive, where they know how to repent and renounce and, and get rid of their past and especially the trauma and abuse because we live in such a society where, um, and again, this is one of the things I will say about Christianity, most of Christianity is messed up in the sense of they're broken, they're hurt, they're lost, they're confused, and I am passionate about helping them uh, one at a time, whatever it takes to bring somebody so they can go to bed at night and not hear the voices anymore, not take hours to go to sleep because they're so full of pain and anguish and turmoil and they're so full of hatred toward the person that hurt them in their life. Those are all very real things, uh, trauma, and um, I wanna help those people get set free. So that's, that's the goal of what I'm gonna do here on YouTube. Uh, and, and there's gonna be some, you know, my email and so forth and uh, people that can help you if you have questions or whatever. But one at a time is my passion to, to help people get set free. Um, another thing too, and it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's a catchphrase, but it's a phrase that's very um, big in our society now, and that's mental health. I'm not a mental health expert. I'm not a therapist. Um, but what I do know with the people that I've seen help them uh, with their past, trauma, abuse, whatever it is, and forgive and learn how to walk in freedom, um, their mental health has become sound and stable uh, in most ways. And that's a big thing in our society now, mental health uh, and, and how much stuff is out there in the sense of uh, 
prescription medic medications, which again, I won't ever touch on that stuff. I'm not a professional in that area. Um, but I have seen people set free and, and they are walking in freedom. They can go to bed at night. They don't have any more voices in their head where they used to have. There, I know people that went to bed at night a year ago and they couldn't count the number of voices in their heads. They couldn't go to sleep. They'd wake up in the morning screaming and shouting because there were voices screaming at them and they had no idea how to get fixed. And um, so I'm, I'm here t and I'm passionate about that. That's my goal. That's my introduction to, to YouTube. And uh, I hope that um, I can help you out. I do want to give a little introduction of, of who I am. Why am I going to use the, the term or the name <clears throat> Mountain Preacher? I'm passionate about the mountains. I'm passionate about God's creation. I grew up north of Spokane on the Colville Indian Reservation uh, I, in Inchilim, Washington. I hunted, I fished, I played sports. Um, I love the mountains. I love God's creation. I love exploring. I love being up there. I have uh, trail cameras all over the mountains, and I'll actually play some of those on here as well. I love God's creation, and God created this world for us to enjoy. Not to worship, but he created it for us to enjoy, and I'm, I'm passionate about the mountains. Preacher, why mountain preacher? I'm not necessarily a preacher. Um, I'm more of a, a pastor, shepherd. It's my heart to help people, um, shepherd people. Um, but I love to preach and teach God's word, not in a way that, man, you better obey this or God's going to come and mess you up, but uh, God's heart is for you. And, and I'm going to uh, do a lot short short videos on here that are going to be about just essential Christianity teaching, but it's going to be focused on relationship with Jesus and how much he loves us. So that's the reason why the name Mountain Preacher, because I'm passionate about the mountains. I'm passionate about uh, telling my story on how what God did in my life and, and sharing that story with others. <clears throat> I was saved in 1987. What does that mean? Uh, the Bible teaches about salvation, uh, Jesus hanging on the cross, uh, going to the grave, being raised from the dead three days later, and ascend, ascending on high, uh, sitting at the right hand of the Father. I'll cover those things in, in videos and teachings, but basically, uh, we all need to be saved. There's, there's none out there that uh, has a corner on the market or has any kind of relationship with God unless it's through Jesus Christ. Um, it, even if you look historically without using biblical history or the Bible, it proves that there was a there was a man named Jesus who died on a cross and was raised three days later. So that is our salvation, uh, 1987. Now, what happened in 1987 is I was playing football at Eastern Washington University. Um, I, um, it was my third year there. I went there in 1985 and my third year, um, I guess it would be my second year, into my second year. I've been reading the Bible. I was not a Christian. I, I, I was a party animal, your normal college student. I wanted, um, I wanted the fullness of this life in the sense of sin and pleasure. I wanted to play football. I wanted to be successful. Um, but my brother, who had, um, had given me a Bible my uh, senior year in high school, and I actually read it, um, and I kind of read a little bit of it now and then through that first two years of college. So what happened to me was uh, I was reading the Bible and I actually was going to church sometimes and I, I loved church. It was kind of weird. I'd, I'd go home after church and, you know, take a nap um, Sunday afternoon, get up and party. I, I was I was a heathen, but um, there was just something about the worship. There was something about the teaching that really got me going in the sense of, there was a passion stirring in my heart about that. I didn't know really what it was. Um, 1987, I was ready to go home for the summer. Um, I was in my dorm room. I cleaned it all up. And um, I think I was going to do one more night there and go home the next day, if I remember. It's been a, been a ways. It's been 36 years. Um, and it was kind of a two-year culmination of being convicted of my sin by the Holy Spirit and just um, living in sin, and this, this culmination took place, and I really felt, um, and again, it's uh, kind of weird, maybe it might sound weird, but I just felt that God just supernaturally walked through my door, 
in my dorm room and he gave me an opportunity to say yes to him. And um, that's what I did. I, I, I said yes to Jesus at that time. And um, it was the most incredible thing in, ever happened to me in my life. It, um, I've never turned back since then. I've always served God. I've needed to grow. You'll hear a lot more about my story now and then. But there was something that God showed me at that time. And I remember what he said to me. I don't remember if it was audible. I have no idea. But I just remember that God said to me um, that I'll be a pastor someday in Spokane, Washington. And I had no idea what that meant. It was like, all right, I'll, uh, I'll see what happens, but I don't know what that means. But here's the thing that hit my heart that still hits my heart today. It says, I'm going to show you how to love people like I do. Now, um, that's a little intense because I don't know if I knew how to love people back then. And um, it was something that hit me and I didn't know what to do with it. And I felt love because it, I was instantly born again. I had God living inside of me at that time. But I, I really didn't know how to activate that or play that out in my life. And it's like I said, it's been 36 years and uh, I'll share as videos go um, how that went and, and how I matured in that. But um, it's been an intense thing in my life. Now I'm all about helping people find freedom in Jesus. And that's my passion. Um, again, that, that's, I live for that. Um, and I absolutely love it. That was about 1987, 1988, 1980. Um, I'll share this story really quick. Uh, I'll go back to when I got married. But my wife and I, in 1987, Lori, we went to, or 1997, we went to a church uh, in Vancouver, Washington, pastored by Pastor Bob and Sue McGregor. And it was about um, <clears throat> uh, 10, 11 years after I got born again or saved. And that's where I really learned for 12 years because of Pastor Bob and Sue, I learned how to love people. And I'm just gonna tell a little abbreviated story. Uh, my Pastor Bob McGregor and Sue, um, uh, Pastor Bob tells his story. It's all always told it for years and years and years, but he was very abused as a kid, very traumatized, grew up in a not a good situation. Um, and, uh, but he pulled me aside right when we started going there and just really shared with me. He said, I'll help you love people. I'll, I'll help you learn how to love people. I was kind of a religious zealot at that time. I was passionate about Jesus. I was passionate about doing everything right. I was passionate about living for Jesus. But one thing I didn't know how to do is love the broken person, the one that was really broken. Now, the sad thing is, is that everybody's broken. Only a few people will actually admit to that. But he really showed me over that 12 year period because he was very broken. I was broken and really didn't know it. But he really showed me how to reach out to the, the person who was broken, the person who had been abused, the person who was the outcast, the person who had nothing going in their life and reach out to that person and say, man, I wanna help you walk with Jesus. I wanna help you find freedom. So that's where I really learned how to love people like Jesus loved people in that 12 year period between 97 and 2010. And I'll share that more. Um, as far as just the introduction, um, my wife and I, Lori, we got married in 1989. So um, next month will be 35 years, been a long time. We are super blessed. We have three amazing kids that are 31, 28, and 22. All three of our kids are serving God on their own. They love Jesus. Um, they're normal people. Um, they all have spouses that are amazing. We have two daughter-in-laws and a son-in-law, and we are so blessed because they are, they are amazing people. And we have three grandkids um, that are almost five, four, and one, and we're super blessed, and hopefully in the future we're going to have more. That's just kind of a inter quick introduction to family. Um, my wife and I moved to Spokane in 2009 and planted a church from Pastor Bob and Sue McGregor's church. And um, so we've been lead pastors for 15 years, but we really, for 
ever since we got married, we've been working in different ministries and pastoring people. So there's never been a time in my Christian life where I haven't really tried to help pastor people and walk with people and love people, even through a lot of brokenness in my own life, through um, trials and tribulations and just being real with you. Um, so I had to learn a lot of personal experience and, and help people walk through their experience to get where I am at today. Um, we've been pastoring, like I said, since 2010. About four years ago, um, and this is part of my passion too, is to help plant churches in small communities like I grew up in. So we planted a church four years ago in Inchilim, Washington, um, that is on its own now. My brother and, and sister-in-law are pastoring that church. I'm just starting to plant a church in Colville, Washington, Colville, Kettle Falls area. And it's just really going to start next month in a sense of public um, services. And uh, we've had some amazing, absolutely amazing breakthrough with people up there the last year. There are so many stories that you're going to want to hear that are just will blow your mind away. Um, on people getting set free that are so down in the dumps, ready to end it all. But yet now they're free. They're living for God. And yes, they still have to walk out their salvation in the sense of maturing in Jesus. But you're going to hear some amazing stories and it's so stinking cool and i every time i get to help somebody find freedom in jesus to live like jesus it's just like this this is what i live for this is why god put me on the earth is to help people get to that point um <clears throat> so let me just give you a couple of examples um what does it mean to be broken what does it mean to to live and i'm talking to christians too i'm not talking to non-Christians, I'm talking to people who, who have a relationship with God. Do you go to bed at night with voices in your head and you're just like, how do I sleep? How do I even live life? Because there's so many, there's so much turmoil going on in my head. There's voices, there's, there's, there's things shouting at me. I don't even know what to do with this. Or do you go to bed at night or wake up in the morning and there's so much bitterness and anger in your heart? Uh, and I'm talking to Christians, I'm talking to people who love Jesus but don't know how to get set free. And um, do, you, do you go to bed at night with so much pain and, and bitterness and anger and hatred in your heart toward the person who hurt you and abused you? And, and maybe whatever, when you were a little girl or a little man or a little boy and you were abused, do you, do you go to bed at night just with this like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know how to live life anymore because my heart hurts so bad. Well, I want to help you. I want to help instruct you that um, Jesus um, Jesus said this. I'm going to read this because I, I ad-libbed a little bit on this scripture out of Matthew 11. But Jesus said, Come to me, all who are broken, all who are weary, all who have heavy burdens, all who have hatred in their heart, all who have murderous thoughts, all who have turmoil, all who are confused, all who feel condemned, like you will never add up to anything because you're just, you're condemned, you're, 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 your story's been written, there's no hope in your life. How about all that have no hope? How about all that are shameful? Jesus was talking to everybody when he said that. And he said, all the things I just listed, he said, come to me and I'll give you rest. So I have a question for you. Do you want to live in rest? Do you want to live um, in a relationship with God where you feel so loved, where you feel so cherished, where you feel like, oh my God, I'm so in love with God because I know that he loves me. I know he created me. I know he has a plan for me. I know he's passionate about a relationship with me and I'm so full of joy and rest and peace that God loves me. I'm going to share a lot of short teachings um, on different topics, um, but they're really going to be focused on relationship with Jesus and not religion. Now, religion to me is man adding to what God does. God's rules are this, love God with all your heart and love people the same way. 
so many Christian teachers and pastors have a real issue with that because they want to add a whole bunch of stuff to that. But if we really learn to love God with all of our heart and love people the same way, Jesus said that we fulfilled all the prophets, all the law of Moses, everything that was ever written in the Bible is fulfilled if we learn how to love people and love God. And that's my passion. I want to do teachings on does God love us? What does it mean to have a relationship with God? What does it mean to have faith over fear? What does it mean to live like Jesus? What does it mean to walk in freedom? And then you're also going to hear on here, as time goes, you're going to hear a lot of stories from people who have walked in absolute grief and shame and condemnation and bitterness and hatred and the lowest of the lowest of the lowest of the lowest when it comes to their heart condition and just a few steps that Jesus gives us in the Bible that they go through those and they're walking in complete freedom. So I'm excited to share those with you. We're going to do some interviews and just share with you how people have been set free. And why are we doing that? We're doing that so you can be set free. God is not a respecter of persons. He loves everybody the same and he is passionate. God is so passionate He's way more passionate about it than I am. He's way more passionate about anybody else because he hung on a cross for our sin, to save us, to set us free, and that we would walk like him. So again, this is a Van. My, my nickname on here is uh, Mountain Preacher. You know why now. And I'm excited about this new thing I'm going to do. And I'm excited about seeing people get set free and walking with Jesus in a real relationship.